Um, it is a pleasure to, uh, to be here, to be able to speak. Um, I don't know about you, but so far, as, as our uh, evangelist Malachi prayed, I have a smile on my face. There are so many little touches in today's service that have, have put a smile on my face. And I thank God for that, because today, in today's day, um, it, it takes quite a bit to get us to smile. So we thank God for the joys that we can enjoy today. Amen. Um, so, Pastor, having already prayed, I'm just going to get right into um, what I believe God would have us here today. Um, I want to talk, but before I get into the sermon, I want to talk about something special that I brought with me. Some of you, <laughs> I hear some chuckles. Uh, some of you, just looking at this, might already be familiar with, with what this is. Um, and some of you who know me very well might also know what this is. So this, this is a, a very special shirt that I got as a gift uh, for my birthday from someone who loves me very dearly. They paid quite a bit of money for this gift. And it's not even like, it's not even like your typical shirt, right? It's not even called a shirt, it's called a jersey. Uh, it's a football jersey. And, um, and they paid quite a bit of money for this. And it's, it's a shirt that I, um, that I don't treat like other shirts, right? I don't wear it all the time. And it's, it's a shirt that I, I set aside for a special purpose. And so um, it's, it's dedicated. It's a very dedicated shirt. Uh, maybe some of you have something like that at home, something that you set aside for a particular purpose. Um, I know children have, like a, a lot of children have like a special plate or a special cup, right, that they set aside for a special purpose. And so that's what I want to talk about today is dedication. How dedicated, we're going to do a bit of examining, how dedicated are we? How dedicated are you? And I think, um, I think this is a, a great opportunity for us to check some things um, about our lives. Pastor has often said that sometimes we're not seeing the manifestation of the things we're expecting from God because we don't have the right mindset about it. So today would be a good opportunity for us to check our mindset about ourselves and how dedicated we are to the Lord. Um, so I'm not going to, we'll just put the scripture up, but I'm not going to read through it because we already had uh, evangelist Dr. Adriel read it. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, she even read the very version that I had selected, which is the International Children's Bible. And so um, our doctor, having already given the word, we'll just jump right into <laughs> the message. Is that all right? Amen. All right. So before we get into what it means to be dedicated to God, I just want to point out a couple of things from this story, from this scripture. So first off, uh, in this Bible story, there are three people, there are three individuals that we are told are dedicated to God. We have Simeon, Anna, and of course, Jesus, right? Second, there are two types of dedication that we uh, observe in this, in this story. There's the dedication as a baby, which is what happened to Jesus when his, his parents brought him to the temple to be dedicated. And that's something that we practice here at Shiloh, and we believe that every parent should do um, uh, when, they, you know, when they have children. And then, of course, there is the other dedication, which is when you're older, and it becomes your personal decision. The last thing I want to note in this story is that Everyone who was dedicated to God made that choice. They made the decision to be dedicated. We just know that Jesus made the decision to be dedicated later in life, um, after his parents had already chosen to dedicate him as a baby. All right, so now in the scripture, we'll, we're looking back at the scripture. Uh, as we know, following the law of Moses, it was customary for the firstborn child to be dedicated to the Lord as a sign of remembrance that while the, the people of Israel were in Egypt, the angel of death killed the firstborn Egyptian sons, but the Lord had spared the firstborn Israelite sons, right? And that's in Exodus 13, if you I want to refresh on that story. So in many churches today, we carry on the custom of dedicating children to God. And I know that many of you were dedicated to God when you were younger. But what does it mean to be dedicated to God? Today, I'm going to talk about three ways to understand what it means 
to be dedicated to God. For, so for the first point, point number one, being dedicated to God means we are given special value. Just like I talked about with my shirt, oh, I forgot to mention some things. Nah, I'll skip that. <laughs> we are given uh, special value. Just like I, I mentioned with my shirt, it had, somebody had to pay a bit of money for this shirt because it's not your regular shirt, right? When we are dedicated to Jesus, when we are, uh, sorry, when Jesus was dedicated, uh, we see in this story that his parents had to pay an offering, had to, uh, to give two pigeons uh, as it was required in the law of Moses to make it official. Does this mean that Jesus was worth two pigeons? Well, kind of, but it's largely symbolic. Again, Exodus 13. But what does it mean to have special value? It means to have a special price, a God price. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Uh, you might be a little confused by that, so let me explain. We're going to go back to the garden, right? When Eve and Adam, um, back in the Garden of Eden, obeyed the serpent rather than God, they essentially sold themselves to the enemy and to sin, right? And they sold all of their descendants. And who are their descendants? Us, that's right, you and I. They essentially sold all of us to sin. But God had a plan, even from then, to buy us back by sending Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, it says, you know that in the past you were living in a worthless way. You got that way of living from the people who lived before you. Of course, Adam and Eve, right? But you were saved from that useless life. You were bought not with something that ruins like silver or gold, you were bought with the precious blood of the death of Christ, who was like a pure and perfect lamb. Christ was chosen before the world was made. See, so even in this scripture, we see that there is a price that was paid. And, and the scripture points out specifically that that price is not a, a, a cash price. You don't have a price tag on you. But it is still... A price and the only price uh, sorry the only thing that could pay that price was the life of someone else the life specifically of Jesus Christ his blood so now when we were sold into sin we didn't have a say in that right I don't know about you but I didn't get to I didn't get to choose about no thank you Eve no don't I'm out but today we can choose to be bought out of sin and out of the enemy's lair by accepting what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. Amen? And that's something to rejoice over. So when we are dedicated to God, our value changes to that God price. And that is something so important for us to understand, especially now, especially in this life. Uh, I, I feel that we don't value ourselves as much as we ought to. We don't see ourselves as having been paid a price that doesn't have money attached to it. It could never be attached to money. That someone else, a very specific someone, God himself, had to pay that price. So do you get it now that every human being is precious to God? He sent his son, Jesus, to die for every single one of us. But when we are dedicated to God, we show that we understand that we have a special value. If you have not chosen to dedicate your life to God, I encourage you to do so today. There is no earthly price that can equal the value of your life. The only one who could set it, set that price, and then pay it um, is God because he created us. So, uh, re-emphasizing that first point, being dedicated to God means that you and I have special value because Jesus bought you with his life. Amen. Point number two, being dedicated to God means that we treat ourselves and we expect ourselves to be treated specially. I keep using the word special. It's important. 
that we see ourselves as special. And so remember what I said about my shirt? I, I don't treat it like a regular shirt. It's not even called a shirt. It's called a jersey because it's special, right? So, and by the way, that's, this is purely for the sake of supporting the sermon, like, okay. So let's, let's, let's look, and oh, back to it being special. It has my favorite number on it. That's part of the reason why it's special. This is my number. Um, yes, this is my number. Um, so let's, let's look first at Anna for point number two, being dedicated uh, to God, meaning that we treat ourselves specially and we expect ourselves to be treated specially. So focusing on verses 36 to 38, we see the story of Anna and we see how she was treated specially, that uh, she got to see baby Jesus with her own eyes and to tell everyone who was waiting for God to rescue them about the savior who was going to do it, right? And what about Simeon? Was he treated specially? Of course he was. Looking uh, at verses 25 to 35, Um, more specifically in verse 25, we learn that Simeon was righteous and devout. I was using the NLT sometimes to prepare, but in this, in this passage it says, in this version it says that he was a good man and he was very religious. What does that mean? Good and very religious or um, righteous and devout? It means he was dedicated to God, right? So what did God do because uh, Simeon dedicated himself to God? God put his Holy Spirit on Simeon, and he showed Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That's awesome. When he dedicated himself to God, God made this special promise to him. And we learn that that came true, right? Simeon got to see baby Jesus with his own eyes. And he got to do so just as the Lord promised before he left this world. And so we're going to look lastly at Jesus. And I know what you might be thinking. Well, Jesus is already special. He's the son of God. But it's not that simple, right? Because at any time, Jesus could have been your average child. He could have been your average baby. He could have been your average boy. He could have been your average man but someone had to keep making the choice to be obedient to God and to stay dedicated to God. If Jesus's mom and dad had not been obedient and taken Jesus to the temple to be dedicated, they would not have heard or learned about the special things that was set out for Jesus to do. So not only was Jesus treated specially, but so were his parents because they were dedicating Jesus to God. So I, I want to I want to take this this opportunity to speak especially to our parents. Parents, that's why it's so important to seek God about how to parent and direct your children. Even as Pastor uh, prayed through the rededication prayer, um, it's so important that that parents we you seek God for and about the direction of your children's lives, because only God can line things up for your children perfectly. Only God can do that, right? Only God can give you the insight and the wisdom because he knows exactly what special thing he has planned for your children to do. You can't see the future, but God can. And that's why it's so important to to seek God and to believe him for that and keep on doing it, right? Mary was given a slight glimpse into the future and the pain that she would endure because of her son's calling. But she still dedicated him to God and she still kept seeking God for her son. So parents, even when things get challenging and a sword pierces your very soul, remember that that's what Mary was told. I implore you to hang in there, rededicate your children and keep seeking the Lord for them, like Mary did. Also, be mindful of the words that you speak over your children and allow to be spoken over your children. Those very words will, don't, I 
Don't kid yourself. Those very words will impact, affect your children, their future, how they see themselves, where they go. Please be careful of what you say to and about your children and allow others to say about your children. All right, back to everyone else. So after you've dedicated yourself to God, then you begin to treat yourself specially and you should expect others to treat you specially as well. Why? Because God did. So I don't mean that you should be, what does treating specially or expecting yourself to be treated specially mean? I don't mean you should be rude or pompous or think yourself better than everyone and start you know, walking around with your nose in the air. No, I mean we should be loving and gentle and kind because God is all of those things. And we should strive to be like God, amen. It also means that we should expect to be treated with love and kindness and gentleness and respect, amen? So because I'm dedicated to God, I treat myself specially. So that means that there are some things that I will not do or try not to do, like lie or cheat or do drugs or murder. But there are some things that I must try to do like pray every day and read God's word, go to church and tell everyone I can about Jesus. The Bible tells us again in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, in the past you did not understand, so you did the evil things you wanted, but now you are children of God who obey. So do not live as you lived in the past, but be holy in all that you do, just as God is holy, God is the one who called you. When we are dedicated to God, it is our duty to live differently, to live as though God has called us, just as, as we're uh, encouraged to do in Peter, in, in First Peter. And the rest of that scripture says, be holy because God is holy, right? And so living, uh, being dedicated to God means that we are going to be mindful about what we do, about how we allow ourselves to be treated, about how we treat ourselves and how we treat others by living differently. So if we do the things we're not supposed to do, or we do the things, sorry, if we, yeah, if we do the things we're not supposed to do, or if we do the things that we um, are, we don't do the things that we are supposed to do, does it mean that we're no longer dedicated to God? No, that's right. No, it doesn't. But we do need to ask God to forgive us and to show us what it is that we need to do in order to turn in the right direction, right? All right, so, so far we've learned that being dedicated to God means that we are given a special value, right? And that we treat ourselves and expect ourselves to be treated specially. And the last point, is that there is a special purpose and plan for us. How dedicated are we? Do you see, do you pursue the special plan and purpose that God has for you? Again, back to the shirt. Remember I was saying that I only wear it on special occasions. That's my special plan and purpose for this shirt. But in our Bible story, we know that God's special purpose for Jesus was for him to be our savior, right? That he would reveal God to the nations, as Simeon had prophesied. Or he would, in this version that we, we read or we heard earlier, that he would be a light for the non-Jewish people to see. That was the, the purpose that God had for Jesus. Simeon also said that Jesus' special purpose is that he was sent as a sign from God. So Jesus was a faithful witness to the manifestation of God's word. In fact, Jesus was the very word of God. Amen? We also learned that Jesus was going to be a mind reader. How cool is that? How do we know this? Because Simeon also told Mary that he would reveal what was going on in here. He said the heart, so I'm pointing to both. <laughs> he would reveal the very thoughts 
of our heart, right? And then let's look at Simeon. What was his special purpose? What special plan did God have for Simeon? Well, God had planned for Simeon to be a prophet. Simeon repeated, or he closed the loop on Isaiah's prophecy from Isaiah chapter 7, verse, I think it was 13, from thousands of years before about what Jesus was going to be when he said that he would be a sign from God. And then he continued his prophecy by telling Mary ahead of time why Jesus was born, what he came to do, and what would happen to Mary as a result of what Jesus had, well, of what God was planning to do for him, right? In Anna's case, because she had dedicated herself to God, she became an encourager by sharing the gospel message with everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. She shared the good news about who Jesus was and what he came to do. So I hope that in all of this, we've learned what it means to be dedicated to God and you see why it's important for us to be dedicated to God. Because when we're dedicated to God, when you're dedicated to God, you understand your value. You understand how valuable you are and you understand what your value is. We also learn to treat ourselves specially and to teach others to treat us specially. And finally, we seek out and live out God's special purpose and plan for our lives. So although many of us were dedicated to God when we were little, we have to, we have to want to stay dedicated to God. It's a choice. It's something we have to choose all the time. And it's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy to be dedicated to God, but it is worth it. Simeon dedicated himself to God and believed God's promise. Can you imagine his excitement when, uh, and his relief when he saw what God had said come true? When he finally saw baby Jesus, can you imagine that? Hearing from God, who knows how old he was when God actually said it, and he had to wait all that time, stay dedicated to God in order to see that promise come true, and then finally, one day it did. Can you imagine that? Can you also imagine how excited he was when he realized that Jesus was going to do everything that God said he would and more? that Jesus was going to rescue all of us. That had to be exciting. Imagine the, the plans and the purposes that God has spoken to you. And if you haven't heard them yet, I encourage you to seek God about them. There's much to be excited for, especially in these dark times. We need your excitement. We all need each other's excitement. So I'm, as I said before, I'm sure it wasn't easy for, Imi, for Simeon to stay righteous and devout to God, devoted to God, but it was worth it for him because he got to see the promise come, come true. And that's how it would be for all of us. Some days it will be tough, but when we think about what God has for us, what he's called us for, that should help us get through the tough times. And do you know what else? You're not alone. We're all in this together. Just like how Simeon and Anna and Jesus all got, in this, got to the same place, all met up in the same place, there are many of us who are devoted to God, and we help each other every day by praying for one another, encouraging one another, and being there for one another. So I encourage you again, if you haven't sought the Lord or, or if you haven't dedicated yourself to God already, I encourage you to do so today. So, okay, we've, we've gone through what it looks like, um, how to change our thinking about being dedicated to God. And in Pastor Joel's style, I know that you would also want to know how to be dedicated to God. So for you adults, I'll just leave you with a slide with some final tips on how to be dedicated to God. But I won't elaborate. I'll let Jesus, Simeon, and Anna in the scripture do that for you. We've just highlighted the points on the slide. So again, I ask, are you dedicated to God? Do you see yourself having special value? Do you treat yourself and expect yourself to be treated specially? And finally, do you know God's special plan for you, his purpose 
for your life. If you've answered yes to any one of these questions, then we're going to pray that God help us to continue on the right path. But if you've answered no to any of these questions, then we're going to pray that God would show you, show us what we need to change and how so that we can be dedicated to God. Amen? So I'm going to, uh, we're going to pray now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness to us. We thank you, God, that you give us an opportunity, Lord, to recognize the value of being part of your family, to recognize the value of being called your child. Lord, if there is one today who has not dedicated themselves to you, God, I pray that even as they hear you knocking on the door of their heart, that they will indeed open the door and accept you. God, for those of us who have dedicated ourselves to you, I thank you. And I pray that you would strengthen and encourage and keep us on the path. Lord, for, for anyone, God, who is struggling with whether it's understanding their value, God, with treating themselves or allowing themselves to be treated specially, or with understanding and following your purpose and plan for our lives. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice, to walk in your direction, Lord, to walk out what you are calling us to do in order that we could be fully dedicated to you. We thank you, God, and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, beloved, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And be reminded that that peace from God that passes all understanding is what's keeping your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And beloved, every blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and with you both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.